In Iowa, a federal judge has temporarily blocked key parts of the law due to go into effect Monday that would ban books from school libraries if they depicted a, quote, sex act. The law, signed by Republican Governor Kim Reynolds, also bars teachers from discussing gender identity and sexuality before seventh grade. Judge Stephen Locker agreed with those suing, writing that the law was incredibly broad, banning crucial history books, classic fiction, and even guides to help students avoid sexual assault. To understand more, I'm joined by Derek Black, a professor of law at the University of South Carolina, and Aaron Murphy, Des Moines Bureau Chief at the Gazette. Derek, I want to start with you. This is a temporary decision by the judge, but how much does this tell us about the court fight ahead? Yeah, to win a lawsuit like this, you have to establish that there's going to be a likelihood of irreparable harm and that you're likely to win if you go to trial. And so this is quite common in these type of uh, lawsuits. So the judge said, look, you're likely to win if you go to trial and we can't allow this law to go into effect because we can't unwind the problem once it starts. So, you know, there's there's not going to be much second guessing at the trial court level. Now, of course, you can appeal uh, a temporary injunction to the higher court, but Right now, plaintiffs are in good shape in the trial court. A lot of issues here, Aaron, including, of course, First Amendment speech. But what do you know from covering this about how widespread uh, the effects might have been? Was there expected to be many books pulled from the shelves in Iowa, widespread chilling of teachers' speech? There actually already has been, um, and that's part of uh, the case that was made by the plaintiffs in, in the hearing that was previously held. They had a, a list of uh, districts across the state and, and had a combined roughly 500 books that have already been pulled from those schools' uh, library shelves. It'll be interesting to me moving forward. The state counter-argued to that that some districts may be over-applying the law, misinterpreting the law, and I think that will be an interesting argument as, as this legal process continues to play out, whether it's this, the law is being interpreted properly by the schools. Derek, there has been in the past court cases rulings on sex ed, uh, but this is hitting also at gender identity and transgender, gay, lesbian, bisexual kind of discussions in the classroom. Can you help us understand what a court said so far about what schools can regulate and what is free speech? Well, the real problem here is that when this law said no discussion of sexual identity or no discussion of sexual orientation, the court says, look, on, on the face of it, what it's saying is you can't discuss maleness, you can't discuss femaleness, you can't discuss heterosexual couples. So this, you know, it may have been the intent of the legislature to target LGBTQ issues. The court said, based on the language, you are barring basically every single book known to man, woman, and, and whatever other pronoun you might want to apply, that there's always a, a character with some sexual identity or it's in some form of relationship, and this law, regardless of its intent, banned it all um, by its language. And so the court struck it down on that basis. Aaron, what about that? I mean, were schools confused? Were there schools saying we can't talk about husbands and wives, those kinds of things? Yeah, that was an argument made all the way back to the legislative debate when the bill was being considered, and that gets to what the ju judge was talking about when he used terms like wildly overbroad. And, and the state argued that, no, it's very clear. It, it's seeking to uh, regulate very specific things. But uh, the plaintiffs have been arguing and opponents of the law have been saying ever since its legislative debate and throughout its implementation here that it is confusing and that it's and it leaves so much gray area and, and educators say it paralyzes them in, in decisions they have to make and not knowing how they should make those decisions about what they can and can't discuss in the classroom, what books they can and can't keep in their libraries. Aaron, how hot do you think this will be in the politics of 2024? And then Derek, to you, what do you think is culturally at stake? Aaron first. Yeah, well, I'll say here in Iowa, we're already seeing evidence of it as the first in the nation caucus state. We have Republican presidential candidates come in here, uh, and often they're talking about this. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who's one of the leading candidates, he passed a, a similar bill in Florida, and so he talks about this issue, and, and former Vice President Mike Pence, when he was in, he talked about this issue. So uh, it, it certainly has been in play here politically in 2023 already in Iowa, and so it wouldn't be surprising to me anyways, based on that, to see it as part of the election discussion in 2024. Derek. 
there's been a playbook going for about two years now to get people uh, upset and excited about their local schools so they'll come out and vote in, in midterm and what would be the next presidential election. You know, the irony is that what's being taught or not taught at public schools really has nothing to do with federal policy at all. It has nothing to do with who the president is or isn't. But yet uh, this is, you know, this is a tool to get people excited and, and use overbroad terms that are undefined. And I think the real fallout here that bothers me the most is that of our public schools themselves. I mean, these are the one place where we hope to bring people together, find common ground that, you know, our schools are not supposed to be political. And what we ultimately have are people injecting uh, politics into the sort of last bastion of sanity, uh, what I call a pillar of American democracy. So I think that's the real loser here is public education. Derek Black and Aaron Murphy, thank you so much.